You get warm, fuzzy feelings when you visit the website of the Humane Society of the United States. It's full of pictures of cute little animals anyone would want to pet or hug. But the site's news section is missing a very important story. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Somehow, the Humane Society site's editor did not think it newsworthy to include the fact that the Center for Consumer Freedom and 77 donors have filed complaints against the charity. Will Coggin of the Center is here with us today to discuss the allegations. Will, thanks for speaking with us. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. An organization such as the Humane Society of the United States tugs at our heartstrings. We suppose that by making a donation, we will prevent the gassing of adorable puppies and kittens. Let me quote from their website. We and our affiliates provide hands-on care and services to more than 100,000 animals each year, and we professionalize the field through education and training for local organizations. So, Will, you're saying the society is not affiliated with local humane societies that run pet shelters? No, it's not, even though they have obviously very similar names. You know, we're all familiar with local humane societies that exist in towns and counties across America that run pet shelters, but there's actually no affiliation between those pet shelters and the very similarly named Humane Society of the United States. That's amazing. Uh, Just what percent of donations actually go to pet shelters? Only about 1%. We got that from their tax return. If you look at the tax return for the Humane Society of the United States, you can add up all of the outgoing monies that go from this organization to you know, the local humane societies and other pet shelters across America, and it's only about 1% of their budget. I know there are conflicting statistics. So why don't you tell us what the truth is about the percentage of donations going toward fundraising? Sure. Well, if you go to their website and you might come across something that says, oh, only about 20% of our money is spent on fundraising. And that's actually also not true. Again, if you look at their tax returns and you do the math, it's actually more like 50% or slightly more than 50% of the money is used on fundraising. What changes would you like to see the Humane Society of the United States make on the website so that potential donors could make a better informed decision? Simple honesty would be a good start. I mean, this is a group that goes out and they use pets in all of their appeals because they know that's what raises money. Frankly, it's very dishonest. They're presenting a very misleading picture to America, and frankly, it's a bait and switch. So I'd like to see a couple different things. First off, they might want to change their name away from Humane Society. There's so many of these Humane Societies across America do good work, and clearly these guys are trying to bank off the good name of these local Humane Societies. So for one, certainly consider a name change, or at least be very, very upfront uh, about the fact that there's no affiliation with these local humane societies that run pet shelters. Secondly, to have more honesty in their fundraising materials about what they actually do with the money. As we mentioned, they spend a lot of money simply on overhead, simply on trying to raise more money. They're what we like to call a factory fundraising operation, a, a fundraising mill. They exist to, to raise more money primarily based on how they spend their money. But secondly, you know, the money that does go to programs, you know, by and large, does not go to pets as people would think. They have a sort of a more PETA-like, more of the animal rights, animal liberation, political stuff that they do. They want to discourage people from eating meat or from drinking a glass of milk. Okay, I I can understand why some people would say don't eat meats, but why not have any milk? They don't believe in having any kind of animal protein at the end of the day. And so they're, you know, like PETA, they sort of have an ideological, very hardcore animal rights, you could say, belief system of the people who run this humane society of the United States. You know, they, a lot of them come from PETA or from very similar organizations to PETA. You know, in their belief system, America would be better off if we did not raise animals for food, generally speaking. You know, obviously meat is a big part of that. And also raising dairy cows, they don't want to see that either. Well, getting back to the Federal Trade Commission case, uh... What do you think the next step will be? Well, hopefully the FTC does an investigation. You know, they certainly have the authority, and they have in the past gone after charities that have not been doing what they've promised their donors. So we're very hopeful there. As well, oftentimes the FTC will work with state attorneys general who also have uh, authority over charities that operate in their state. So in fact, about four years ago, the attorney general of Oklahoma, Scott Pruitt, who is now running the EPA, he put out a public statement, a public consumer alert about the Humane Society of the United States and their fundraising. And you know, simply he just said, look, you know, we've gotten complaints about how they raise their money. Money. And so he wanted to put out a statement clarifying that if you give money to a national animal group like the Humane Society of the United States, it may not come back to any of their local shelters. So again, that's very helpful, and we hope that more authorities like Attorney General or the FTC will put out statements like that. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? 
many large charities, generally speaking, and the Humane Society of the United States is one of many. You send your money off, and a lot of it goes into executives' pockets or sits in bank accounts. So if you do care about animals, we always tell people, give local. Well, thanks for bringing us up to date on this important issue, Will. Well, thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure. Will Coggin is Research Director for the Center for Consumer Freedom. You may check out its website at consumerfreedom.com. And, unlike the Humane Society, I believe they carry the story about the federal complaints. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.